thankful for God's faithfulness. We are. You got anything else you wanted to say? I do, but you probably don't want to have all the time. <laughs> I, love, right. I love all of you, yes. and we, we prayed for this day. We yeah. prayed for God to, to start one hope and for it to continue and to flourish and for these seats to be filled and for this community to know and love Jesus. And I, I'll never forget, I sat right over there, A15 or A16, one of the two, and I cried, cried because God showed me. We came to a movie. You remember we that? We saw Finding Dory. We saw Finding Dory. And, and we, we prayed for people to find Jesus. This room was packed. But I said, on God, a Sunday morning at 10 30. And I prayed and I said, God, this is what I want for one hope that you will do the same, that people will come and know you and come and know Jesus. And I believe, I believe with all my heart that he's going to bring it to fruition, that people in this he's community, still doing it. yes, people in this community are going to come to know Jesus with all their hearts. Amen. Well, how, how hasn't God been good? Come on, somebody. God is faithful, and He is so good. Well, six years ago, where were you six years ago? Some of y'all hadn't even moved to Florida yet. <laughs> hey, let me give, give you a little quick run back. Uh, in September 2016, the average cost of a gallon of gas, $221. Come on, Jesus, bring back them old, good old days. <laughs> Billboard's Hot 100 songs the week we launched included Closer by the Chainsmokers. Y'all know that song? And, and Heathens by 21 Pilots. Sounded like it was a good time to plant a church <laughs> when Heathens was at the top of the charts. And the week before we launched, uh, in September 2016, a new little TV show hit the airways on NBC called This Is Us. That's how long ago. They're done, but we're not. <laughs> hey, six years ago, I wasn't 50 yet. My hair was a lot darker. My son was a little guy. Y'all, this was promotional pictures we took right before we launched the church. Uh, this has been a journey of faith. And uh, is it okay if I tell the story of One Hope on the birthday celebration? So I, I need to take you back a little bit, um, and I'll probably go back even a little bit farther. But in January of 2015, God began to stir my heart. Uh, we had moved to... Central Florida from North Carolina back in 2012, and we moved to the, uh, you know, great metropolis of Auburndale. Come on, y'all. I, What's that? Oh, it's really, for people that live there, y'all, it's called Auburndale, okay? Um, that is the correct way if you live there. And I, I, t I want to tell y'all, I still love that town. I love the people there. And uh, we came to help a friend of mine who was pastoring a church there, uh, and he had been battling cancer. And uh, it was an adventure, to say the least. Uh, due to his sickness, sometimes I wouldn't know until Sunday morning uh, when I would get a text and say, hey, David, you're preaching today. Uh, talk about God stretching me. Uh, there were times when I'd find out that morning, hey, you're just handling the MC stuff, you know, you're going to do the announcements. I don't, we're not quite there yet. You can go back for a second. Uh, we, uh, we, you know, we, we weren't sure. Sometimes we would preach in uh, tag team. So, you know, the pastor would say, hey, I'm going to do the first point, and then you do the rest, and I'll come up at the end to close the message. I mean, come on, y'all. Y'all had tag team preaching about two weeks ago uh, from our lead team. Wasn't that good? We did that all the time back then there. All right, now Faith, hit me up with that, that picture. This is my friend, Shane Simmons, that was the pastor that I was working for. This is one of the most famous sermons we did there. Uh, I'm in the back behind the boat. Y'all see that? Me knelt down. So Shane's up front. We, we conned two middle school students into getting in the boat. They didn't know what was about to happen. We were preaching a sermon about how Jesus calmed the storm. And in the middle of it, we started blowing fans on them, 
And y'all, they didn't know, but this old youth pastor had the privilege of hosing them down with a, with a, uh, I had a, a water hose with a sprayer, and we just sprayed them down right there on stage, y'all. And it was fun and memorable. I don't think anybody who was there that day will ever forget that sermon about how when Jesus says, peace be still, and everything stops. And I loved it. Shane was laughing at that point because those boys were just drenched. (laughs) God stretched our faith during this season. And nine months after arriving there, my friend, my pastor, my, my boss, he gained his reward and he went to heaven. And boy, was my faith stretched then. Because, man, I moved all the way down here from North Carolina Really, when I moved here, Shane said, I, I can't promise you a job, man. I don't know what's going on with me. He said, how about you come for the summer? I'm like, okay. I was here about four weeks, and he said, can you stay a little longer? <laughs> and then about two weeks later, he's like, can you stay permanently? And I said, sure. And, uh, but then at that point, we weren't sure what was next. And through transitions and the addition of a new pastor and walking through lots of change, we get us we get us back to January 15. And we didn't know where we were going to go or what we were going to do, but we knew God was stirring our hearts that there was something more for our lives and for our ministry. We had been uh, in ministry in North Carolina for 20 years, working with students and uh, executive pastor at the, the last church we were at for a year. And uh, we knew God had something prepared. And that whole year of 2015, God began to prepare our hearts and to prepare the ground for the seed that he had planted in our lives. And and he began to put us with people and opened our heart to doing something I never thought we would ever do. And that was to start a church and to plant a church from scratch. To go someplace where we didn't know anybody and start a brand new church. And the greatest of those people was uh, my pastor is what I call him now, Pastor Ron Johnson. God put us together. He pastors uh, the great one church in Orlando. It's in Longwood, and they've got multiple campuses, and we're part of their church family. They helped plant us. And uh, the pastor came alongside Michelle and I, and he saw the vision that God had put in our hearts for this community, and they got behind us. They became our parent church, and and our church that we were serving at in Auburndale uh, got us, got behind us and pointed us towards uh, a church planning organization called ARC, the Association of Related Churches, and began to walk with ARC and get training and eventually was approved as an ARC church planner. This is a picture of Pastor Chris Hodges. Um, uh, he uh, is the pastor of Church of the Highlands in Birmingham, Alabama. Uh, Tony, that's your pastor. And they came from there, and uh, this is, yeah, come on, that's good. And uh, they came, yeah, they were part of that church. And ARC is the sending organization uh, that comes out of of, uh, of, of the heart of, of uh, Pastor Chris Hodges. And uh, uh, they were church plant number one at, at Church of the Highlands, and we were church plant number 607. And now they're over a 1,000. God has been good. February 2016, our family parachuted into this community. That's what they call it. We, we rented a house, and uh, we only knew one person, and then she didn't stay here very long, <laughs> and she moved later. But, but we didn't have very much. We didn't have much money. We didn't have a promise of anything. We didn't have a, a big team. We didn't even know where we were going to meet when we first moved to town in February. But we knew without a doubt that God had called us and he had put a dream in our heart to see a life-giving church in the greater Davenport community. And over those next several months, we prayed. We searched for a location to meet. Uh, we heard no a lot. There was one school in this community 
that I reached out to, and uh, they told me no. And so I later decided I'd go someplace where the principal was going to be at, and I got myself in the same room so I could get up and talk to her uh, after the meeting. And as I talked to her, she told me no again. And then I called her about a week later and said, hey, I had another idea. Is there any way that we could do something different to make this work? And it would benefit you and benefit us. And she said no again. Three times I got a no. I finally got the message in my thick head. I had another school I reached out to, and I tried to sell them on all the benefits of having uh, us on their campus and all the things we would do for their staff and their school and maybe equipment we could buy and uh, put in there for them to use, and they said they weren't interested in our benefits. Uh, and so door after door was being closed. And as we drove through this community, Pastor Ron came over one day and we drove around, and, and I talked to him about the possibility of the theater, and Pastor Ron said, David, I, I really believe that's the best place you guys could be. And so I kept coming back. I'd call over here, and they'd say, well, the person you need to talk to is not here. I'm like, well, when were they going to be here? And they said, well, we're not sure. Here's their email address. And I'd email. And then I'd show up over here. And I just kept coming back. And so there was an events manager that was here uh, by the name of Eric. Uh, he actually lived in Miami. He still lives in Miami. Uh, but he, he was in charge of allowing groups to come in. And one day I walked in the door, and I didn't know he was going to be here. I was just going to come and talk to the local manager again and say, hey, is there any way we can work this out? And when I came in, Eric came around the corner. And he, he said, David, you really want to do this here, don't you? I said, man, this is, I feel like this is where God wants us to be. And so he said, I'm going to work this out for you guys. And so we sat down at the tables out there and we talked. And he, he said, you know what? I've had a lot of churches that wanted to come use our facilities for their, their services. But, you know, when I told them the price, they always said, oh, we can't do that. I said, well, just hit me up. Come on, give it to me. We're sitting there. And so he pulled his computer screen around, and he showed me the number. And when he did, in my heart, I was like, oh, Jesus, help us. <laughs> But I put on a big face. I'm like, oh, yeah, no problem. We can do that. Y'all, that was faith because we didn't have nothing, right? <laughs> and, 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 and he said, all right, we'll do it. And, and we began to make plans. That was like in July. And uh, we went all over the place trying to meet people. Uh, I remember joining the, the Lions Club of Davenport because I thought, hey, that's a community service group I can get involved and I met people like Kim and Debbie Miller who are sitting right up there in the middle. Kim and Debbie have been part of the Lions Club for I don't know how long, 20 or 30 years probably. Uh, they've been been there forever serving this community in such a powerful way. They also deliver y'all's mail. Y'all should say thank you. <laughs> and, uh, and Kim's been the mayor of Davenport and Worked in the Haines City Fire Department. The guy, he tells me all the stuff he's done. I said, man, you're not old enough to have done all this stuff. But uh, I met them and some other people. And God began to just connect us with folks. And, and we would have what we called interest socials. So we, what's that? Yeah, like a little party. And we'd go into Dunkin' Donuts and I'd set up a little table with brochures. And Michelle would sneak up behind people as they were ordering and she'd say, hey, I'll pay for your coffee and donuts if you'll go talk to my husband over there for five minutes and hear about a church that we're starting. And so we would do that, and we would meet people and, and, and invite them to join this team. Before we figured out Sinopolis was going to be our location, the conversations kind of went like this. Hey, we're starting this life-given church. We believe God's called us to this community. And said, oh, that's so awesome. It sounds so great. And they say, where are y'all meeting at? We said, we don't know yet. They'd say, man, so nice to meet you. Thanks for the coffee. You know, I mean, it was just like shut down. But, but, but we just kept persistently asking, inviting, 
we get in line behind people at Publix and, man, just try to, like, be friendly. And people thought I was weird because I was trying to talk to everybody, you know, hey, and then try to work out some way to bring it about to, like, oh, we just moved here. Oh, yeah, what do you do? Oh, I'm glad you asked. I'm starting a church, you know, and just try to figure a way to work it out. We would go up to Perkins. Y'all know it looks like it's about to be torn down right now. But, uh, man, they had this little side room, little sunroom up there. And we would go have meetings up there. And I would buy about 10 pies. And I would buy about all kinds of appetizers. They had some good appetizers there at Perkins, y'all. I'm sad they closed it. There's one still in Kissimmee, I think, y'all, if you need one. Uh, But uh, uh, we'd go and we'd order pies and have people come and we'd share about the vision of the church and then we'd invite them to join our team. And, and so uh, we, we ended up with about 35 people that joined our, our team. That was exactly the number that ARC required you to have. I mean, they promised to give us training and help us with finances and they gave me a coach. We had a pastor from South Carolina that they actually met in a movie theater, so it was great because when I was getting ready to come to the theater, I'm like, tell me what questions I don't know to ask. And and, and so he began to like pour into me and help me and, and, and cheer me on as we were like trying to work all these things out. And so we ended up with these 35 people and, and, and that was a real stretch. Some of them were people from our church in, in Auburndale and others were people that we'd met in at Duncan and at community events and friends of friends in the area. I'm like, all of my godchildren that live in Lakeland, I'm like, y'all are on my team. <laughs> I, y'all don't have no questions to ask. You're on the team. You may not have to stay after the first Sunday, but you're on the team. I got to have names to submit to Ark, you know. And so y'all are on the team. And uh, I, I think before we actually launched, uh, we had whittled that thing down to about 30 or 25. But I'd already turned in my list, so it was okay. <laughs> we... Uh, had secured the location, and, and, and by the way, we're the first church to ever meet in the Sinopolis Corporation. I'm talking about, that's, that's everywhere. We're breaking ground, y'all, and, uh, and, and, it's, and can I say, it has been a wonderful thing to be here. Uh, I think so many times people look and they say, when are y'all going to get your own building and all of those kinds of things? And, uh, uh, you know, I, I, I'll, I'll tell you a little more about that later. But I, I believe God's not finished with us here yet. And so on September 11th and September 18th, we paid the theater to let us come and hold what we called practice services. Uh, it was not open to the public. We didn't advertise. Uh, we need to learn how to set up all of our equipment and the sound system and find where the outlets were to plug stuff in and, and, and do all those things. And, and we gathered our team. We had a trailer back then that we, uh, we, we packed really tight. I should have put a picture of that one up. But uh, uh, it, it was tight, and, and so we planned, and we set the vision about what God was going to do. And on the 18th, I got up in front of those 20-something people right here. I stood right here. We had practiced setting up and practiced hearing down and all this stuff, and I stood here, and, and I was preaching to them, and, and just for like a 10-minute preach, y'all wish I would do that now, but I, that was the only time, 10-minute preach, and I was like trying to encourage them about, hey, next week, I was like, this place is going to be full of people, and they looked at me like I had three heads. I think they thought I literally had lost my mind. I remember one of the guy on the team saying, man, we'll be lucky to have 50 people here. I was like, get thee behind me. <laughs> no, I didn't. I didn't. I thought about it, y'all. <laughs> it was a step of faith. And, uh, and by the way, can I just pause right here? And I just want to recognize Lewis and Sandy Bachelor. Will you guys stand up, please? I know they tell me every year, don't bring us up front, don't. I want to say thank you. Y'all, these are, yes, out of, out of that 35 people, these are the, the only ones left, y'all. 
of that 35. These are original launch team members. They were in our church in Auburndale. They live in Auburndale, y'all. They drive up here every week from Auburndale. Matter of fact, the first, I can't tell you, it was more than a year that they came every Sunday at 8 o'clock to help unload the trailer. They stayed after service to, to pack everything up, set up and tear down, and finally I told them, y'all cannot come back anymore. I, I, y'all got to stop. You got to take a breather. No, yeah, come to church, but but you can't you can't keep coming setting up because you guys are just wearing yourself out. But I just want to say thank you guys. We love y'all so much. They believed in the dream of one hope, and they supported it. And they believed in us, and they supported financially with their time, their talent, their treasure since before day one. And so we love you guys today. So on September 25th, God blew us away. This room seats, there's 175 seats in this room. And we believed everybody, that the place was going to be packed. What we didn't realize, there were 239 people packed in this room. I was so afraid. Yeah, I, that, that's our selfie from that day. I was so afraid. Yeah, Kim and Debbie, I had to, they came in and I, I literally moved this TV out of the way and moved it out so they could sit right here. Uh, I literally remember thinking, oh my gosh, the manager's going to come back here and shut us down because we got so many people in this room. And there were people sitting up on the steps. Orlando and Becky, they were sitting on the floor right over here. Uh, they got the postcard. Yeah, I forgot to say, we sent out 50,000 postcards to this community and invited people to come, and you guys came. Matter of fact, how many of you were here on day one? Would you stand up? I want to see all the people that were here on day one. Come on, look at this, y'all. Come on, dim the lights just a second, Dominic. Can you dim the lights just a second so I can see? Golly, look at that, y'all. Awesome. Come on, these are day oneers right here. All right, you can bring them back up. You can bring them back up. Thank you. We had, in addition to what was in this room, we had kids ministry. There were 30 children in the two rooms over there. By, by the way, we got a baptism in what mobile church was going to be like. Michelle had asked one of her friends that was a teacher from Lakeland, who had done children's ministry before, could she come that first Sunday and run the kids' service for us because we needed some help in that area. And she got sick and called us at 7 o'clock that morning and said, I'm not coming. <laughs> what are we going to do? <laughs> we called a couple of our volunteers, and they uh, stepped right up. And, man, it was so awesome. And can I tell you all, that on that day, seven people gave their lives to Christ. What an amazing first day. There's been lots of Sundays since that first day, and without a doubt, uh, there's one thing I can say that's true. God has been good. He's been faithful, and He's still good, and He's still faithful. It's always been a journey of faith. By faith, we moved to a town that we didn't know anybody. By faith, we trusted that God had a vision for us and for this church and for this community. By, by faith, we chose. I didn't take another job. I wanted to. I was like, I got to provide for my family. And my wife said, we're going to make it. God's going to take care of us. And if you are working another job, we're not going to be able to build the church because you're going to be focused on something else. And so we chose to be all in with planting One Hope Church. By faith, we had launch parties, inviting people to join the team. By faith, we bought equipment and, and, and trusted God that He would take care of all of that. And by faith, we entered into an agreement with Sinopolis to pay them a lot of money every week. <laughs> by faith, we sent out these 50,000 postcards. And by faith, we launched One Hope Church on September 25th, 2016. And look what the Lord has done. It's always been a journey of faith, and it's still a journey of faith. 
Psalm 115, verse 1. I know y'all are worried, like, is he going to read a scripture today? <laughs> I want us to know, not to us, Lord. Not to us, but to your name be glory. Because of your love and your faithfulness. Come on, somebody. we got to give Jesus the praise. We didn't have a whole lot when we started One Hope, but we had a call. And we trusted the one who called us that he would be faithful. I know today is all about celebrating what God has done at One Hope. And we got a lot of stuff to give away still and have a lot of fun out in the lobby. But I want you to know that I, I, I want to share from Scripture about this journey of faith. God is taking us from faith to faith. That's what I titled this message today. No matter what your situation is, no matter what your dream or your call, your problems, your challenges, God wants to take you from faith to faith. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 8 says, By faith Abraham, when called to go to a place he would later receive as his inheritance, obeyed and went even though he didn't know where he was going. Now you may not know where God is taking you. You know, I wish we had a perfectly orchestrated plan of exactly where we'll be in year 7, 8, 9, and 10 for One Hope Church. I wish we had a spot-on projected financial budget. I wish we knew when we would move into our own building, but I want to tell you that God has not released us from here yet. Y'all, I hope God touched you in the service last week. But I want to tell you that ministry happens at this theater before and after service all the time. Um, Last week, ministry was happening at the bar at 1 p.m. last week. Because after service was over and after everything was packed up, I was sitting at the bar with one of the people from this theater. They're like, Pastor, you were sitting at a bar? Y'all don't worry, I wasn't drinking nothing. Water. Right? I don't know why y'all be worried about me drinking something because y'all drink stuff all the time. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> no, it's got to be funny. But can I tell you that as we sat together, they began to open their heart to me about what was going on in their life that day. And they said, I want you to pray for me before you leave. I said, well, let's pray right now. And so we joined hands, and Michelle came over, and she took hands. And we prayed over that person and over their situation and over what God was doing. And I tell you, when I said amen, I looked up, and literally tears were dripping off their face. And God was touching them. And I want to tell you that, that, that you know, people like, when are y'all going to get a new church? Hey, we'll get a church building when God stops having me sitting at the bar at 1 o'clock on Sunday praying for people. I don't think that's going to be anytime soon. <laughs> God is faithful. Has everything been perfect in these last six years? No. There's been lots of hills to climb and valleys to go through, but I'm thankful that we serve a faithful God who is with us. In times of hill climbing and in times of slugging it through the valleys. Y'all, we've had some home runs over the years here at One Hope. But we've had plenty of swings and misses. But God's been faithful through it all. Uh, We're on this journey where uh, a sense of God's calling and we choose to trust and obey. And God comes through for us. and, And then we realize that I can trust God again. And then we recognize that. I can trust Him more and more and more. Then I think that that we realize that this is not about just me doing something. This is about something way bigger. We realize that we trust and obey God. It gives us the opportunity to cooperate and, and participate with something bigger than me or what I can do on my own. This is God doing something. We participate from faith to faith. I want to tell you that trust leads to trust. Jeremiah 17, verses 5 to 8. It says, Thus says the Lord, Cursed is the man who trusts in man, and makes flesh his strength, whose heart departs from 
the Lord. For he shall be like a shrub in the desert and shall not see when good comes, but shall inhabit the parched places in the wilderness in a salt land which is not inhabited. Y'all, that's depressing. I'm glad verse 7 is next. <laughs> Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord and whose hope is in the Lord. For he shall be like a tree planted by the waters which spreads out its roots by the river and will not fear when heat comes. But the leaves will be green and will not be anxious in the year of drought, nor will cease from yielding fruit. Y'all, we don't want to be uh, living cursed, literally meaning hemmed in uh, by obstacles and powerless to resist. We want what verse 7 says. We want to be blessed and, and do that by trusting in the Lord and putting our hope in the Lord. And when we do that, we do what one of my mentors, Pastor Tim Gilligan, always says, that we become happy, stable, fruitful, and blessed people so that we can be a blessing to others and bring glory to God. So we trust God, and then God shows Himself to be faithful, and then we trust Him some more. Then we realize that it's not about how strong my faith is. It's more about how faithful our God is. We see that God is faithful. It's easy to put our trust in Him. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 24, it says, God will make this happen. For He who calls you is faithful. Y'all, He's faithful. God's faithful. We can count on Him. I mean, you know today that God is a healer. I mean, you know that God is a provider. How about that God is our guide? I mean, you know that God is our protector and our redeemer, the one who forgives, the one who helps us, the one who never leaves us or forsakes us. We know that God does more and more and more, but uh, if He wasn't faithful, we couldn't count on that. Jesus Christ, the Bible says, is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's always enough. He's, he's more than enough, and His grace is sufficient. Y'all, I've changed a lot in six years. So have you. But you know what? God does not change. And as we put our faith in God, as we uh, allow trust to lead to trust, that's, that, that, that's what... Repeated business is about, right? You know, when you go to Chick-fil-A, that number one may cost you a little bit more in 2022, but it's still that same Christian chicken. It's the same as it was six years ago. Actually, they didn't have one six years ago in Davenport, but we still drove to Winter Haven in Lakeland to get that chicken, right? And thank God for progress, and we got one right here. I need one in Hang City, y'all. <laughs> we trust them, though, and they come through, and we, we trust them again, right? Trust leads to trust, so we go from faith to faith. Trust God. He shows himself faithful, and that trust leads to more trust. The Bible says that when you put your trust in the Lord, you'll never be disappointed. For Samuel 17, 37, it says, And David said, The Lord who delivered me from the paw of the lion and from the paw of the bear will deliver me from the hand of this Philistine. He's talking about Goliath. And Saul, the king, said to David, Go, and the Lord be with you. Trust leads to trust. The whole nation was backing down to one man. And David, a shepherd boy, said, You know, God's taken care of me every time I needed Him to take care of me. Why would I allow one man to stand up against uh, uh, my God? I'm not going to do that. I'm going to trust the Lord. And he did. Romans 4.21, talking about Abraham, says, He was fully convinced that God is able to do whatever He promises. We put our trust in the ability of God, but we also put our trust in the reliability of of our God. We can always count on the faithfulness of God. 
I may not always know what to do, but I do know that I can call on the Lord. And that He said uh, that, that, that we could trust His Word. He's come through before, and I believe He'll come through again. He has never failed. I don't know what your calling is. I don't know what you're dreaming about. I don't know what your problems are that you're facing. But I know that we can put our trust in a faithful God today. Romans 1.17 says, For in it the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. It's from faith to faith. Anything you do in life is from faith to faith. It's kind of like monkey bars. Anybody remember the monkey bars? Probably removed all the monkey bars from the playgrounds because everybody wants to sue everybody. Monkey bars, the one rung to the next rung, right? You see the little kid there? He's like one rung to the next rung. It's from faith to faith. From faith to faith. We go from faith to faith to faith and trusting on that that, that monkey bars. And, 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 and I want to tell you today, the reality is, uh, let me show you the whole photo. <laughs> the reality is that there is one who is holding us up, and that is God. Anytime you see me or you see anyone else going from faith to faith to faith, we're being held and we are being helped by the Lord. In those moments where we feel like we're losing our grip and we can't hold on anymore, His grace is sufficient to hold us up. Can I tell you today, God has got you. You're held and you're helped by God. Trust says, I'm never alone and I'm never without help. When I'm weak, He's strong. Without Him, I can do nothing But with Him, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. So don't be surprised that God comes through. Always be amazed at what God is doing. We close this morning. Faith's not a formula, y'all. But it does have ingredients like gratitude. Can I tell you that when you discover how faithful God is, you need to be so grateful. And so thankful. Thanks is always appropriate to God. Y'all, I'm grateful for all that God has done in six years at One Hope Church. I'm thankful for His faithfulness to my life and to my family. and The stories I've heard of God's faithfulness in your lives too. I want to pray for you this morning before we close just bow your heads right now. Thank you, Jesus, for all that you've done in our lives and in this church. I thank you today that you're not finished. God, you're not finished with all that you've done in our lives and in this church. Thank you today that you're faithful. You've been faithful for six years, and you're going to continue to be faithful in the coming years. So today we choose to put our trust in you. In Jesus' name. And just this last moment as you keep your heads bowed and your eyes closed. Maybe you're here today and you say, I, Pastor, I need to put my trust in God. I've just been trusting in myself or trusting in other people or other things in this world. Today's a great day for you to open your heart to Jesus. He came to this earth and He lived a perfect and sinless life. and He gave His life in in, in our place so that we could have a relationship with God. And we could be children of God. And so if you're ready today to put your trust in Jesus, I want to invite you to pray this prayer with me. Right where you're at. Nobody's going to ask you to come forward or anything like that. But make a moment this morning personal moment with Jesus and pray this prayer dear Jesus 
Thank you for loving me. Thank you for dying for my sins. Please forgive me. Come live inside of me and make me new. I receive your love. I receive your salvation. I make you my Lord, my Savior, and my soon coming King. I give you my life. Thank you for the hope. Come on, let's celebrate those that are making that decision today. Can I just encourage you for a moment? If you prayed that prayer, would you take just a moment, grab one of the connection cards that's in the cups nearby you, and mark on the back your decision that you're making, and write your name, your phone, your email address on the front. Just keep it short. Hey, nobody's showing up at your house today. Nobody's like going to bomb your email or your phone. We just want to encourage you and let you know that we're here for you. If you're watching online, you can uh, uh, just email me at prayer at onehopechurch.org. And uh, we want to stand with you in what God is doing.
bless you. Yes. May the Lord keep you. Yes. May his face shine on you and yes. show you his favor this week. Yes. Hey, we love you. God bless you. Grace and peace to your house. Is our prayer for you. Go get a walking taco and some cookies. Awesome.